Hello, my name is Adrian and it's a great privilege for me to have Fuzi in the studio here. Great to have you. And we basically have a real treat today because you have an extraordinary story and that story has been turned into a documentary all those years ago in 1972 uh, by Thames Television and the documentary was called A Passage to England. By the way, on the screen and in the description of this interview, there is a link where the documentary A Passage to England can be watched. For those of our viewers who have not seen that heartbreaking true story, Fuzi, can you please summarize what it's all about? The documentary film in, of 1972 called A Passage to England was the first of its kind for the British public and it explained uh, the dilemma of identity crisis of someone having been brought up in the West who belonged to the East and it speaks of cultural conflicts throughout the film not just about myself but how it affected every member of my family. It is also a film that uh, was meant to be on compassionate grounds for my stay in Britain. Uh, a stay because I did not have the right documents or passport. And the only way to remain in Britain was really to get married to someone with a British passport at that time. And I had run away from that in Pakistan. I hadn't wanted an arranged marriage. So to land in Britain and find myself sort of, that if I didn't do, didn't have the arranged marriage as soon as possible when I was back in Britain, it could have meant that they would deport me and I would end up back in Pakistan. And so the film was really meant as, a, as an application or a plea, if you like, to the Home Office to allow me to remain in Britain. But the Home Office did not accept the film. And I ended up uh, at the end of the film saying, all right, I give in. If there is no other way of uh, my survival, then I will take on a, an arranged marriage, even though it was against anything that I, I wanted for myself. And it is after the film was made that things became more accepting of the fact that I could not be happy in any um, forced by circumstances or whatever arrangement of marriage, that I had to be happy about it, that I had to be free to accept uh, a life partner in that way. And so the film ended there. It, it, didn't, uh, it didn't show a, a second part as we are doing now since 1972. And so much has happened in, in all this time. So much has changed just the way the world is changing. Um, but some things do remain the same. Very interesting. So how did this tremendous story continue then? Well, I went from career to career. My stay in Britain was on a student visa. So when I qualified in psychiatric nursing, I had to continue studying. I did another four years in teacher training. I qualified as a teacher, but still I had to continue as a student because I did not have visa to work in Britain. And then there were no jobs for uh, student teachers because at that time we had Mrs. Thatcher as the prime minister in Britain and she closed down a lot of schools. So you had a lot of surplus of teachers. So I went from career to career. I went from one uh, education course to another and until 
it was like I was going to be an everlasting student, which I didn't mind because I love learning things. But the pressure of not being allowed to stay was didn't make me feel secure. It didn't let me feel free as a person to be who I wanted to be, even though I, I was not sure what that was going to be at the time. Um, and that's, that's how it, it has been. So you grew up uh, in an Ahmadi Muslim family. What was the, the most important thing that happened in your life since 1972 when this film was made about you? I think ever since I was a child and I grew up in an English Church of England school um, and we sang a lot of songs every morning about God, um, I think I was interested in, uh, in nature and who created it, in, crea in the creator for us, for us human beings, for the human race. And, and to me, it was very important to get close to, the, to my creator. My argument with God, however, always was that why did he make me a woman? Because I felt that God had favored man but where women were, was con were concerned, and this is to do with the Islamic faith, whatever uh, line of Islam you follow, whatever denomination, that women are something of, of a secondary uh, or submissive part. Uh, they are never encouraged to be individuals or independent, to have independent thinking. They're never appreciated for it, though there are women that, you know, have made quite uh, landmarks in their life. Um, and this is in recent years more so than at the time the fil documentary film was made. But my argument with God was always, why was not I a man? I also wanted to argue with God and say, it's okay for you. You are God, you are almighty, in control of the whole universe, and nothing can touch you, nothing can harm you. Nobody can take that away from you, that authority, that power. But how would you know what it feels like to be a human being, to be a person, to hurt, to feel? to bleed, to break a bone. And these sort of questions would haunt me day and night. And I went to the source of my early education and decided that I would try uh, finding out those songs that I sang in my childhood about God I also studied lots of religions to make sure that I was on the right path. At one uh, prayer meeting that I attended, um, a young man from a university came and questioned a lot about who is God, uh, who is Christ, uh, why do, d does the Bible refer to him in so many different ways. Um, and. It takes a lot, because we view things from a human point of view, we do not always comprehend the spiritual world for what it is. And God is the creator. God is spirit. And to understand the character of God, you have to understand you know, the spiritual side of our our own selves, of why he created us. So this man, through his questions, which I would have felt I offended uh, my friends with by questioning them in such a way, he put down his uh, books and everything, didn't want to remain in the prayer meeting and walked out. And as he walked out, I got the answers that because he questioned, they, he was being answered. 
I got the answers that I wanted to those longing of, of, of who I was, why I was in this world. And when he went away, the, the leader in our prayer group started to say that Christ is the way, Christ is the truth, the life, and that no man can reach God except through Christ. And although I was really, as a Muslim, only interested in God, I didn't want uh, a secondary figure there. I, I went forward and said that I wanted to accept God in my life, which was really saying Christ in my life, because Christ is the doorway to God. We don't understand this when we are not Christian, but you, the more you uh, want to get close to God, the more you understand that, that Christ is a part of God. And I, as a person who argued that how could God know how I felt the torment I was going through in my life because he was not human, how could he know? How could he shed tears? How could he feel pain? But when I came to know, because I wanted to know God personally so very much in my life, to get my life sorted out, to get it straight, and I felt I could only do so by finding out why I was put on this earth and what purpose had I if I was going to be too white for the Pakistanis and too black for the um, English and that I felt that I belonged nowhere, how was I ever going to fit in? And it is only knowing and accepting that Christ is the door to knowing God that I, I found the peace, the peace that passes all understanding. It is beyond human comprehension. And we can create a lot of peaceful atmospheres for ourselves. We can read a lot about peace. We can read a lot about spiritual worlds and thinkings and faiths and meditation. But really nothing is that concrete, nothing is that solid as knowing God himself. Because they're all man theories. The truth is only in the book. And the more you read it, the more you, it opens more windows, more doors to you. And, and it gets you closer and closer to God. And that is what I wanted. It was the biggest thing that happened in my life because it set me free from all that pain, from all that loneliness that I had. It was a kind of... A, the documentary was about my not having an identity, not having a passport. A document required by people uh, to let me stay in the West or East or whatever. To me, finding God was like finding that passport. It was like finding that identity or even more than finding the passport because it, it showed me not only myself, but I could see the creation of God in others, of why some people tick the way they do. In psychiatric nursing, there were mentally ill people around me my responsibility to take care of them. And somehow, even though they were mentally ill, I realized they have a soul, they have a spirit, and that is cared for by God, not by any doctor, not by any medication. And the more and more I, I looked into them, even though they may have been ill for a very long time, or they may have been a very acute and new patient, a drug addict, an alcoholic. To me, it was understanding what was underneath them, inside them. And that gave me 
an understanding of my own inner self, our own souls. And I found that, you know, God is so much in every human being and that we are often even unaware of it. We don't even know that God lives in us. We, we, we often put him away. And the reason we don't want to know too much is because we don't want to change our ways. Man has selfish thoughts, has selfish needs. God does not allow us selfishness. So we avoid God. And because of our selfishness, we do things that are wrong. And that wrong is a sin. And sin separates you from God. And we are all sinners. It doesn't matter we are leaders of the highest church, of Islam, of Hinduism, whatever, whatever faith you follow. It's very important that we understand that we are prone to sin because we wanted the freedom to be ourselves. We want freedom to choose black or white or gray or green. And we do it sometimes at the cost of hurting others. And anything that can be painful or hurting to others, to me, is a sin. If it is a sin in God's eyes, if it hurts anybody else, then it cannot be a fruitful thing. It cannot be a good thing. And man doesn't, man or woman, does not want to know about sin. It's, it's a word we keep away from us. We wish we could rub it out of the dictionary so that it didn't exist. But the thing is that we exist and sin exists. And the only way we can stop being a slave to sin is to have Jesus in our life. I'm a follower of Jesus. Jesus died for our sins to set us free. And I believe that. He shed his blood to set us free. We are redeemed. We came at a price. We came at a cost so that the veil between God and us can be torn and that we can have access to God directly. That is what God, what Christ has given me. He gave me that passport to enter into God's territory. Even though God lives in us, we as humans don't want to live in God's territory because we will never feel good enough. God is something great, almighty, and holy. None of us want to be very holy. Or if we think we are very holy, we become so proud that we lose the reason. If we have humility, if we have acceptance of our weakness, the more we do it, the more we are childlike, the more God is like a father to us and takes care. But God would not impose on us. He does not say, you have to do this or that. The way in Islam I felt people were telling me, this is not right or that is not right. Or the way I see Asian women or Muslim women covered, even in hot weathers, covered with hijabs or burqa, whatever, the veil, to me that is very, as a medical trained person, uh, very unhygienic. It's very unnatural. And I don't see anywhere in Quran that it, it, it asks people or women to, to cover their hair or, or, you know, not to allow them to be who God made us to be. 
We have such potential as individuals, as human beings, and God wants us to bear fruit to the full, not halfway. And I feel that in Islam, whatever women achieve, they only live their lives halfway. They never get to know the full brim of the joy and the peace that comes through Christ. So for me, the biggest thing that happened in my life, and this was soon after the documentary film, was that I found the key to the door to meet with God. And I know now that I can't argue with him and say, how would you know how a human being feels? How would you know when I cry how, what my pain is like? Because you are not a human being. Well, God proved it. He came down in the form of man. He lived amongst men. He showed the right way. He said the right things. He healed. He did miracles. He brought people back to life. He gave them back their sight. People who could not walk learned to walk again. These are things we can have prophets galore. We can have so many Moses, so many Mohammeds. But, you know, it has to be God. It has to be something like Christ for someone to know God because no prophet can fulfill that. All religions teach good things. And if you study them, there are beautiful things in every religion I found. But in every religion, you know, you have to climb this ladder laboriously to try and reach God. And this is more so in Islam than in any other religion. But in Christianity, it's the only religion where God came down on that ladder to us, to identify with us, to show us the right way. And therefore, for me, I am in the right place when I am a follower of Jesus, because I can never go wrong. I know my identity. I have a, a new passport, a passport that is global, even in the universe, not only on earth. And I can never thank God enough. I can never praise him enough. I just wish. I just wish with all my heart that I could give you the right message so that you would know the beauty of God and how much he loves you. It is my wish. I have a son whom I cry for day and night that he would come to know God the way I know God. I wish he would dream dreams that God would send his saints to speak to him. I have family. Of, I belong to a very big family, as is shown in the documentary film. I long for them to know God because they are, to me, whatever they feel they have achieved in their life or done in their life, and they are doing very well, much, much better in the way of careers or education or materialistically, they are much better off than I and my husband or our son. But I wish even for them that they would know Jesus. They would know true peace, true love, true joy, and the real hope that humans have in life, no matter what our circumstances. Knowing Jesus does not mean that you do not face life's trials. Life goes on the same for anyone. But I, as a follower of Jesus, feel that the more challenges I face, the more 
I am closer to God. That the more weaker I feel, the more helpless I am in lots of ways which I believe I am, the more God is able to work in me because I surrender my all to Him. And this is something that I wish every human being to know. Every time I sit in a bus or a metro tube train or an aeroplane, I look at the faces of people at airports, at stations, and I think, God created him, God created her, God created that child or that disabled person or that homeless person sitting in that corner, hungry for the day. And I think if only they knew God, they would have everything. They would be richer than the queen in her palace. They'd be richer than any king on earth. Because to have God is to have everything. And these are not just words. This is not just being over-religious and pious and this is something that I really cry from my soul for every person to know. That is why I praise and thank God for this opportunity to have been able to share this with you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fuzi, for sharing your wonderful story and for your openness. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you. ایمان رکھتا ہوں خدا باپ پر جس کی قدرت بے بیان ہے جس نے آسمان اور زمین کو بنایا اور میں ایمان رکھتا ہوں اس کے اکلوتے بیٹے پر جو رول قدوس کی قدرت سے پیٹ میں پڑا کماری مریم سے پائدا ہوا پینتوس پلاتوس کی حکومت میں دکھ اٹھایا سلیب پر چڑ گیا مر گیا اور دفن ہوا اور تیسے دن مردوں میں سے جی اٹھا آسمان پر چڑ گیا اور خدا کے دینی ہاتھ بیٹھا ہے جہاں سے وہ مردوں اور زندوں کا انصاف کرنے کو پھر آئے گا
और मैं ईमान रखता हूँ रूल कदूस पर मुकदसों की रिफाकत और गुनाहों की माफी और हमेशा की जिंदगी पर आम